Recently under one of my videos, a kind YouTuber suggested a 12 minute flashlight video to get all the clicks. Just F and review the thing. Don't add humor. Make a four minute video max. It puts the lotion on its skin. Fair enough. How about the Nikkor EC20? You can get a tech tool supply. This flashlight uses an XML2 cool white emitter. Got that coated glass lens, smooth reflector. It's made from aluminum has that HA3 hard anodizing because it's Nikkor, son. You're like, cool, we're moving right along here. What does it come with? A lanyard and a spare O-ring. Oh, um, so how about those dimensions and weight? Oh, and by the way, its head is compatible with several Nikkor branded diffusers and filters. Check out their website to find out which ones. The Nikkor EC20 operates off two button top CR123A batteries, which I did not test the light with, or standard and recommended rechargeable 18650 lithium ion rechargeable. Only button top cells work with this light. I use Nikkor's own protected 3400 milliamp hour cells for all of my testing. And guess where you can buy that cell? So, how's this for efficiency so far? You're like, nice. Whoa, not so fast. We're at the user interface part, which often slows these videos down, and you can see whether or not I put the lotion on my skin, or cut my fingernails often, or wash my hands. Okay, so put the battery in. The EC20 has a single button that gives you total control over the light. Total control. A quick press turns it on and off. To scroll through the modes, press and hold. It scrolls through, it scrolls. It scrolls through all four main output modes of the light from lower, then low, then mid, and high. Release when you get to the mode you want. It has mode memory on the non-flashing modes, so when you turn it off and turn it back on, it's on the same mode as you last left it on. To get to the real reason why you bought the light, the strobes, double-click the switch while off or on. You get fast strobe first, then press and hold while it's in strobe to get to SOS, and then location beacon. Strobe loop doesn't have mode memory, no matter how many people you kill. Sorry. There's a shortcut to the lowest output while the light is off. Press and hold for more than one second. The button has a power indicator that tells you the battery voltage when you insert a battery down to a tenth of a volt. A quick way to do this is to loosen the tail cap slightly and tighten it. Since this light uses an electronic switch, I recommend always unscrewing the tail cap slightly to lock out the light when you're not going to be using it for an extended period of time or carry it in your purse or bag or whatever, like the gunny sack with all the body parts in it. Also, when the battery is at about 50% of usable voltage, the button will blink twice. When the voltage is low in the battery, it'll rapidly blink. Okay, how about those output levels? I set my camera to manual so you can see the difference in brightness. My figures and night cores are on the screen these are tested using the FL1 standard. First is lower. Then is low. Then is mid. Then is high. Sweet, now the run times. First up, high. It starts a bit over 1,000 lumens and steps down about five minutes into 621 lumens. Another hard bump down at about 40 minutes, then it starts dimming again around two hours in, then starts a slower decline and I cut the test off at a little over six hours when the light was barely coming out. Next is mid. It runs fairly constantly for about six hours, then begins dimming. I cut it short a little over eight hours in because that's really all I could handle. Okay, now we're at the beam shot section. You've seen this one before, right? I have a few other similar Nikkor lights seen here. Some brighter, some less bright, er some neutral tinted and some cool tinted. Everyone likes variety, right? You're like, bro, they're just flashlights. It should give you a good idea of what sort of beam pattern the light has, the EC20, at about 75 feet away. The figures on the screen are my readings and not official manufacturer ratings. They are measured using the FL1 standard and not some random numbers picked out of the air, although I was tempted. Okay, so what else? The light is impact resistant to one and a half meters, and waterproof and dustproof to IPX8 standards. 
You've seen enough of my videos, so you know what those are by now, right? I hope so. And although this light does not come with a clip, Nightcore does make a clip for it. And I'll put the model number on the screen so you can search for it on the internet instead of that other thing you always search for. Okay, well, any final thoughts? Because we're trying to make this brief, right? Well, this is a high-powered, reasonably priced light that you can get at Tech Tool Supply, a Michigan-based authorized retailer of Nikkor who supplied this light for review. If you check out the description of this video, you can get a special discount with the coupon code that can expire at any time. If you like this video, please subscribe to this channel, like and comment on my video. And if you don't, well, I'm sure you had a really good reason, especially since you made it to the end of the video.